right welcome back students to the last topic of your chapter that is commercial cells so till now we have studied different different topics in in electrochemistry once we are done with this we'll uh, start solving the numericals and finish off with the board papers done <clears throat> whenever i speak about commercial cells or batteries rather so batteries this particular topic for your grade 12 syllabus it is categorized under two things one is primary battery as well as secondary battery so first let us come back and see <coughs> what actually is the difference between primary battery and secondary battery so when i have to speak about primary batteries then i said okay they are divided into two things one is primary battery and second would be secondary battery okay done so in primary battery the first important thing what are the features we'll see then the quite opposite of secondary battery so first primary battery important concept is they are the once the reaction is produced it can't be reversed remember the first important concept that is in primary batteries reactions cannot be reversed they are irreversible in nature only in the forward direction second important thing primary batteries cannot be reused because once they cannot be reversed i can't reuse it cannot be reused that next important factor of primary batteries is like uh, you know the life of as i said it can't be reused the life of the primary battery is very less yes once it's used then it is it is discarded now most important thing in primary batteries whenever you are writing or in secondary batteries also whenever you are writing okay, let us write that life span is less okay simple nothing the opposite one would be for secondary batteries so what what actually is a battery basically your battery is something which is going to produce electricity by the uh, by performing chemical reactions so a certain amount of voltage is released due to the chemical reactions which are happening inside the batteries so it is a virtue of, you know, of the formation of electricity through chemical reactions that is what is the definition which you can learn so in basically for your grade 12 primary batteries are of three types which you are going to study so let us see the types the types the first one would be <coughs> yes it is daniel cell which we have already studied the second type would be dry cell which i have made the diagram here so let us write this dry cell and the third one would be your <coughs> mercury cell that so when it comes to secondary batteries secondary battery the same thing you have tried the reverse reactions can be reversed it can be reused the lifespan is more the same thing you will write all the three points now in this secondary batteries you we are going to learn about lead storage battery which we use it in inverters this is the mechan i'll be teaching you the mechanism and the cell reactions of this after this we are going also going to learn about fuel cells which are used as in the as a fuel for the rockets isn't it so that also that is hydrogen oxygen fuel cell so this is these are the topics let's come back and start so daniel cell i already did in the earlier video now let me start with dry cell so then now you are speaking about dry cell the most important concept which you should remember yes what are they there are basically five parameters which you have to remember when you draw if you are not remembering the diagram also no problem but cell reactions are very important so in a primary battery the first example dry cell it is also called or dry cell is also called as or it is a form of Leclanchy cell remember this this was asked in last year paper i still remember one of the student came out right uh, and asked what is ma'am what is the dry cell other name for dry cell it's called leclanchy cell that student has called 99 in chemistry so see this this is called leclanchy cell right the, the form of dry cell now whenever you are writing dry cell, you have to speak in terms of anode, you have to speak in terms of cathode, you have to speak in terms of electrolytic solution and you should also speak, suppose if some salt bridge is there, that, that also. Let's start. In dry cell, basically the anode which we are going to take here is zinc. Zinc act, acts as an anode. Next would be, please try to write it in this way only so that everything is formatted and every step carries marks. When I come to cathode, the cathode which I am going to use is <coughs> carbon or graphite. This is the cathode. Done. 
what is electrolytic solution electrolytic solution is a wet paste of okay let us write electrolyte electrolyte it is a wet paste of okay, let me write that because i need this wet paste concept wet paste of ammonium chloride plus mno2 and zinc chloride basically it is a wet paste of this combination yes that is electrolyte now what is the role of the spore insulated porous lining observe carefully this is your anode and inside you have carbon graphite cathode the anode and cathode in between these two you have an electrolytic paste which is filled here isn't it done now what's happening this insulated porous lining whichever is there this one this inside one is acting as a salt bridge remember this this one it acts as a salt bridge between the zinc electrode as well as the paste so remember that or even the anode also so what am i writing insulate okay salt bridge the role of that is this salt bridge that is insulated porous lining okay i have to write all these parameters then only i can expect the examiner to give me marks now still not done after this now i have to write the anodic reaction and cathodic reaction observe carefully always start with anode now anode what will happen always oxidation occurs right now first what what is there the anode you have zinc isn't it now we very well know oxidation means loss of electrons yes now start pick up zinc which is a solid isn't it solid yes by this state it's going to give us uh, two electrons and forms zn plus two over now these two electrons from here through the salt bridge are going to like uh, the, this one are going to get transferred to this electrolytic paste then what happens there observe carefully now this is your cathodic reaction this is reduction in reduction what will happen gain of electrons will happen now observe carefully two things you have to take observe one is mno2 and nh4 plus okay these two the ionic form i'm picking up what are you going to take you're going to take mno2 wet paste manganese dioxide plus nh4 plus these are going to pick up this electron done so now observe carefully what's happening from here this nh3 first important nh4 from nh4 acts, uh, after accepting the electron this gets converted to nh3 and what is left now mn right double o's are there and there is one h how will you write the uh, this in complex this is manganese try to write one o outside one more O inside. This is over. Now come back to this. NH3 stay out. There is one hydrogen here. H. Now what will happen to this ammonia? Ma this ammonia is going to come out or come out and combine with this zinc. And what will happen? It will form a complex. Just see how I am writing. This ammonia combines with zinc. Where is the zinc present? This is acting as an anode, isn't it? Now, it's going to form a complex. We are going to get zinc, NH3 taken four times plus two. Now, what is this? This is this has formed a complex. Just see, it has formed a complex. Because of this complex formation, the amount of zinc present around it has become less because everything is complexed inside that. So because of this, immediately the voltage of this increases. How much is the voltage? I've already written here the voltage of genial cell is 1.5 volts. So let's come back and see what is the role of MnO2. Why is it actually called as dry cell?